Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about our product Jira to SAP Connector Core. I'll show how with minimum effort your SAP system can be integrated with Jira. We'll go over the integration process, which consists of two parts. The first part is configuration and data mapping. And the second part is the business logic implementation in SAP ERP system. Jira to SAP allows you to efficiently connect two worlds, delivering greater results. Let's look at the setup of our solution. All tuning charts are placed in a separate S-Pro thread. We select SAP objects and add a new object. First, you should register the SAP objects for which data is going to be used in both systems. We decided to use as a demo the well-known to us PM notification, just because it is easy to configure. You should assign the ID to the given object. In order for the SAP object to be used in our integration, that object should support the BADI technology. Due to this as a PM notification, let's find one of its BADA interfaces. As a next step, you should add technical data on Jira installation that we are going to integrate with. We assign an identifier and specify a pre-configured RFC connection. And if everything is identified correctly, then we should obtain the information on the system by hitting the Get Jira Info. As you can see, our data is entered correctly. At the same point, we can see the corresponding Jira data, as well as the list of all custom fields. When you save the settings, you create a query for the further transfer to the test system. Next, you should add a project you would like to integrate your object with. Using the search help tool, you can pick one of the available projects in Jira. In the project, we register the required SAP objects. In our example, it is PM notification. Then we declare events and event handler methods. To allow an event handler method to react to an event, we determine the trigger to which it is to react. It links a list of handler methods with corresponding trigger methods. All of this allow to implement any business logic according to the specific requirements and customize the settings to suit the business needs. We assign an ID of the event and pick the type action at the Jira side. In our example, we assign a type of the task in Jira that will be created for this event. To perform a test, we pick a name of the class. We specify a mapping class that is responsible for matching fields between SAP and Jira objects or Jira tasks. No errors were found, tick the box activate, these events are now activated and will be processed. We add other actions. With this configuration, when creating a notification in SAP system, an issue will be created with a type of the task in Jira. Save as it seems that everything is correct. Let's make a check. We create a notification. You can specify a priority and anticipate a start date. Let's save the notification. At this moment, while saving, Jira to SAP is processing events and creating a new task in our project. We are going to reopen our notification. Let's check if the object links were registered. On this tab we see that the task was created. Everything is correct indeed. Right from here we can get into the task. We see our Jira task created in ERP system. Note that the priority of the task is critical. And this is in accordance with the priority that we have chosen when we were creating the notification and the reference to SAP notification itself was registered. During integrating SAP to Jira, absolutely all the fields that are shown on the screen can be filled in using the mapping settings. 
Please note that the budget of the task was displayed automatically. We update the page and see our task PP317. Let's return to SAP and make a change. Let's change several attributes. For example, its description and set a priority as average. Now let's see what happened at the Jira side. We're checking now. The priority is changed to normal and the description is altered. But this is not enough for the full integration. Therefore, it is possible to change the status of the issue Jira in accordance with the workflow that is applied to this project for this particular issue type. Let's take an example that whereas we change the status, we configure the settings that if the notification status changes, the corresponding issue in Jira will respectively change its status. The most obvious status is take to work. To do this, we use the action type T transition and we select again issue type and corresponding action. The configuration control system is warning us that we must specify the transition. Here we indicate the sample issue and the transition, which will be started by start progress. Similarly, we indicate the class of the validator that will decide whether it is necessary to make this transition or not. There are no errors and immediately we create the action type resolve, action transition, issue type and tra transition resolve issue. It is necessary to specify a validator class that will make decisions. In accordance with this setting, if the status of the notification changes, then the status of the corresponding Jira issue will change accordingly. The task open. We adopt notification into operation and save. Let's check our issue Jira and see that it has also changed its status to in progress. The reverse communication of Jira to SAP. It is also possible and configurable in a separate branch. For the selected project, we must create a separate configuration that is responsible for the incoming communication in SAP. We register the issue type on which our system will respond. We pick the setup of events that will be processed, for example, in event resolved and a type event update. In order to the SAP object to be identified and processed, it must to be specified by SAP BO. We specify a validator that verifies the need to perform actions. We specify the handler class that this event will handle. A complete PM notification, which is included in the demo of the subsystem. Let's check for any errors. Everything is correct. If we change the status in Jira, the PM notification status changes too. We we'll run the resolved issue and make sure that our system has worked. We see that the status of the notification is completed. This way, the bidirectional communication is configured. Thank you for tuning into the webinar.